Welcome to the second video on graphing polar equations. I wanted to provide at least one more example and then do a summary of polar equations. Let's take a look at the graph of r equals 4 sine 3 theta. Again, what I want to do is use something called the r value analysis method. And then we'll also take a look at how to use the graphing calculator to help us do these. So first, if we want to use the r value analysis method, if we want to graph r equals 4 sine 3 theta on the rectangular coordinate system where the x-axis would be our theta and the y-axis would be r instead of y. Remember this would have a period of 2 pi divided by 3 or 2 thirds pi and this would also have an amplitude of 4. So the blue piece of the graph and the green piece of the graph makes one complete period of r equals 4 sine 3 theta. Now I went ahead and graphed another piece of it here, and you'll see why in just a minute. Now what we'll do is try to compare this graph on the rectangular coordinate plane to the polar coordinate system. So we're comparing theta to the value of r. And notice that when theta is zero degrees or zero radians, the radius is zero. So we'd be right at the pole. Next, at pi over 6 radians, the radius is actually at 4. So from 0 radians to pi over 6 radians, r increases from 0 to 4. Here's pi over 6, so at pi over 6, it's out at 4. So from 0 to pi over 6, it increases to 4, and then from pi over 6 to pi over 3, it goes back to 0. Now we could find some intermediate points. For example, at pi over 12, it looks like it's approximately 2.5. That'd be somewhere in here. And then also, in between pi over 6 and pi over 3, it's also about 2.5. So somewhere over here. So what happens is, this graph on the polar coordinate system makes a petal. It looks something like that from 0 to pi over 3. Next, from pi over 3 to 2 pi over 3, we might be thinking we should plot points in this region. However, we can see that the r value is going to be negative, so we'd actually be plotting points in the opposite direction. So we'd be plotting points down in this region instead. So starting at pi over 3, r is equal to 0, so we're back at the pole. At pi over 2, r is equal to negative 4. So we plot the point negative 4 pi over 2. Well, here's pi over 2, but since r is negative 4, we plot the point in the opposite direction down here. So what we'll notice is from pi over 3 to pi over 2, the value of r changes from 0 and decreases to negative 4. So the points would look something like this. r is 0 and it decreases to negative 4, or a distance of positive 4 from the pole in the opposite direction. And then from pi over 2 to 2 pi over 3, it, r is equal to negative 4, and then it increases back to 0. Or the distance from the pole changes from the absolute value of negative 4 here back to 0. And looking at this red piece now, from 2 pi over 3 to pi, notice r is positive, so we'll actually be plotting points in this region. And r changes from 0 to 4, and then back to zero. Here's five pi over six, so r would equal four here. And from two pi over three to five pi over six, starts at zero and increases to four. And then once it's at four, r decreases back to zero until we reach pi. And it looks something like this. First thing, we make sure we're in degree mode and also in polar mode. I like using degrees because it's easier to tell exactly what angle we're on. Next, let's go ahead and set up our window. Theta will go from 0 to 360 degrees in increments of 5 degrees. And then our window will be approximately negative 6 to 6. And y will be from negative 4 to 4. Let's go ahead and take a look at the graph. Now, this graph matches our work very nicely. But what's more important is we can use this technology to make a nice graph or to supplement the r-value analysis. If we press trace, 
This will show us the angle theta and the location of the corresponding point on this graph. So we can see as theta increases from zero to 60 degrees, we carve out this first petal. And then from 60 to 120 degrees, we form another petal. And then from 120 to 180 degrees, we complete the graph. And this is why I only graph this from zero to pi. Notice after pi radians are 180 degrees, it just repeats itself. Now the third method to make this graph would be to just make a t-table. Whenever we're not sure what a graph looks like, we're never wrong to make a t-table. And again, the calculator comes in very handy here. I do have the change in the table set at 12.5 degrees. So we could record these coordinates. Of course, they're reversed. Usually it's r comma theta. But we could write these down, plot several of these points, and then make a nice graph that way as well. I went ahead and graphed this again using some graphing software to make a nice looking graph. Let's go ahead and summarize the different types of polar equations that can occur. Circles occur when we have an equation in the form of r equals a cosine theta or r equals a sine theta. And here's an example of r equals four cosine theta. Remember if the graph is in the form of r equals a sine theta, it would be up here in the first and second quadrant. Next, lemnus gates occur when we have an equation in the form of r squared equals a squared cosine two theta, or r squared equals a squared sine two theta. And here's an example of one where we have r squared equals nine cosine two theta. Next, we have limissons, and they're in the form of r equals a plus or minus b sine theta, or r equals a plus or minus b cosine theta. If a divided by b is less than one, we have a limisson with an inner loop. If a divided by b is equal to one, we have a special case that we call a cardioid, which has a heart shape. If a divided by b is between one and two, we have what's called a dimpled limisson. And when a divided by b is greater than or equal to two, we have what's called a convex limisson. And lastly, we have the rose curves. If you take a look at the form r equals a sine n theta, and r equals a cosine n theta. We have two times n leaves if n is even, and n is greater than or equal to two. So here we have four petals, so that means n would be two. Here we have eight petals, so n is actually four. However, if n is odd, we only have n leaves. So if we have r equals a cosine n theta, and r equals a sine n theta, where n is three, we have only three petals and n is five, we have five petals. So if n is even, we actually double it to determine the number of leaves, and if n is odd, it tells us exactly how many leaves we have. Now all this information about polar equations is a lot to memorize, but I think it'd be nice to use as a reference if you're doing a lot of graphing to maybe simplify the R-value analysis. But really with the use of technology these days, there's no real need to memorize all of this because it's so easy to graph them using a computer algebra system or graphing software. So I hope you found this information helpful. I hope you have a good day.